Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be doing a two-part word problem, classic, absolute classic word problem, and you'll see these all the time. You'll see them from algebra all the way up through calculus. This is known as a projectile motion um, model. It's using feet per second as opposed to meters per second. If you've done them with meters per second, you might be seeing numbers more like um, 9.8, negative 9.8 rather than negative 16 and whatnot. So in this particular case, we're in feet per second. The negative 16 will always be in front of the T squared in a projectile motion feet per second problem due to the acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is approximately negative 32 feet per second squared. So that negative 16 being half of it belongs in the front of the quadratic term. The 24 in this example, the numerical value in front of the t, or our variable to the first power in case maybe someone uses x instead of t, is actually going to represent our initial velocity. So if you have a positive initial velocity, the object goes up to start, because positive implies up in this case. If it's a zero, that means the object was simply dropped, okay? Um, you won't really see a negative in these types of examples. The six is the, not initial velocity, but the initial height. So this projectile is fired from an initial height of six feet. If it's got an initial velocity of zero, the initial height cannot be zero because you're dropping something that's already on the ground, kind of doesn't make sense. But you could um, fire something from the ground and you could just drop something zero initial velocity from any other height other than zero. All right, anyhow, after how many seconds will the ball reach its maximum height? Well, since it's a quadratic model, all right, a couple things we've got to consider. Y equals a x squared plus bx plus c. This is standard form of a quadratic, not vertex form. We've seen vertex form quite a bit. Y equals a quantity of x minus h squared plus k, and I think you'll see one like that in the next video. But that is vertex form, and we love it for a lot of reasons. One of those reasons is it's very easy to find the vertex, so it's very easy to graph. Standard form has other perks like applications in this particular word problem you can build a model very easily if it's something falling on earth initial velocity due to gravity being negative 32 you put a negative 16 right here the initial velocity goes right there and the initial height goes right there boom you just built a model very little effort right if we want the vertex from here vertex from vertex form well that's just hk vertex here though this is a bit of an algebra one throwback. You would do negative b over 2a. Negative means opposite of b over 2a. You're gonna get a number. That right there is your um, x value, or it's the h of the vertex. And then you take that number, you plug it in for x or t, da, 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 and you're gonna get your y value. All right, your Y, your K, your input, your output, whatever you want to call it. And that's what we're gonna do. So if you have a negative in front of the T squared, well, what does that tell you about your quadratic? A couple things, right? Our initial height was six feet, six. We're definitely gonna initial, that means at zero seconds. T is X, so that's T axis instead of an X axis. The ball's gonna go up, the ball's gonna come down over time. Now, if it's fired up and then comes down, this model is not the path that the ball is following. This is instead the height of the ball as time progresses. So this axis right here is H for height, and there's the maximum, the vertex. So that's why we wanna know where the vertex is, right? I mean, beautiful. So how am I gonna get the vertex? that t value or x value, I'm gonna go ahead and do negative b over 2a. a is negative 16, b is 24, c is six, so let's go, shall we? So x equals, or t, 
in this case, right? Negative b, so it's negative 24 over 2a, or negative 16. Negative divided by a negative is positive, so we can just ignore that. I'm going to reduce 24 and 2 to get 12 over 1. 1 times 16 is 16. 12 and 16 can both divide by 4. So we get t equals, divide by 4, 3, divide by 4, 4. 3 fourths of a second, or you could even call it 0 0.75 seconds. Now, to be honest, this is probably going to be a little bit easier to work with, but one thing at a time. So after how many seconds will the ball reach its maximum height? We just figured it out. So how many seconds? It's going to be t equals 3 fourths of a second or 0.75 seconds, okay? Same answer. Now what is that maximum height? So I want to know how high height of the so after expression, I really could say it's h equals in front of that, all right? I want to know after 3 fourths seconds, what is the height? Well, plug in 3 fourths for time and work it out and get the height. Not so bad. So what are we going to do? Let's start over here. h equals negative 16, <clears throat> 3 over 4 squared plus 24. 3 over 4 plus 6. Sorry, I'm a little squashed. I just want to fit it all here. So negative 16 times, how do you square a fraction? Don't be a weenie, just square the top and square the bottom. And then how convenient, I could reduce those 16 since that's really over 1, right? Plus 24, which is over 1, times 3 fourths. And I could reduce again 4 and 24. What's that give me? 6 and 1 plus 6. So what did we say was left here? The 16's were gone. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. So h equals negative 9 plus 6 times 3 is 18. Negative 9 plus 18 is 9 plus 6. So 9 plus 6, 15. And the height is modeled in feet. So 15 feet. There we go. And that's it. You're done. So what is the maximum height? 15 feet. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. It works exactly the same for these types of questions. So remember, if your equation that's modeling a word problem is t squared or x squared, if it's a quadratic in standard form, chances are the word problem is going to ask you questions about the vertex. When will it be a maximum? When will it be a minimum? When will it be at its highest? When will it have the most? When will it be at the lowest? When will it have the least? Blah, blah, blah. Chances are you're finding the vertex, negative b over 2a. Get that number, plug it in. Watch your order of operations, and that's really all there is to it. The other thing you might be asked is like, what is the time of impact? Time of impact would be, you know, when the height is zero. You're really finding your x-intercepts, but that's not what this problem's asking us. So, that's it. I hope you feel smarter. If I have others I could attach in the thumbnails, I will. Otherwise, good luck reviewing for your Algebra 2 final exam. Classic, though, for everybody from everyone from Algebra 2 all the way through calculus. Adios.